player in year 2022 recently passed out on the field required CPR and an AED, an automated external defibrillator, to shock him back to life. This isn't the first time that an athlete has suddenly passed out on the field or died. So in this video, I'm going to go over the most common reasons why young, otherwise healthy individuals, including athletes, can suddenly pass out and die, and hopefully convince you to sign up for CPR classes and potentially save a life if you don't already know how to. So what causes people to pass out suddenly? It's actually the abnormal rhythm called ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. It causes the heart to beat extremely fast in a very inefficient manner and causes cerebral hyperperfusion or lack of blood flow to the brain. Your body's compensatory mechanism is to pass out. At least this way your heart doesn't have to pump against gravity. The bad part of ventricular tachycardia is it can deteriorate into V-fib and that's what often kills people. In fact, VT and VF are how people with heart attacks often die suddenly. When they grab their chest and they're having chest pain, that lack of blood flow to the heart isn't the thing that actually kills people. It's the lack of blood flow to the heart that causes myocardial necrosis or death of cardiac tissue. And that irritated dying cardiac tissue can be a source and propagate this rhythm, VT or VFib. And that's what actually causes people to die. Now, heart disease, specifically coronary artery disease or blockages in the arteries of the heart causing heart attacks, that is the most common cause of VT and VFib and sudden cardiac death worldwide. But it's extremely abnormal for young, otherwise healthy athletes to suddenly have a heart attack. The number one cause of why young, otherwise healthy athletes pass out and potentially die is from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common inherited cardiac genetic disorder. It causes an abnormal deposition of myocardial cells inside the heart. But that muscle tissue is also what we call in a myocardial disarray. It's not deposited in a normal way. That tissue that's, that's deposited in that disarray can be a nidus and also propagate these abnormal heart rhythms, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, the same rhythms that kill people when they have heart attacks. So to clarify again, you can have a heart attack and that can cause cardiac arrest because it can initiate ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. But having cardiac arrest or having your heart have an ab this abnormal deadly heart rhythm doesn't necessarily mean that you had a heart attack. And that is most commonly what causes young, otherwise healthy athletes to pass out and die. It's this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which initiates and propagates VT and VFib. Now, bringing it back to this player, I'm not going to comment on what he does and does not have. But in general, athletes who are otherwise young and healthy, this is the number one cause of them suddenly dying or collapsing on the field. Now, people with hokum or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy often have other abnormalities in their heart. They can have an abnormal insertion of the mitral valve leaflets, and this can cause the anterior mitral valve to kind of kink over and cause an obstruction of blood flow. When it causes obstruction of blood flow from the ventricle to the aorta, it's kind of like putting your thumb over a garden hose suddenly. That's why often this can also happen where people can have an episode of syncope or pass out when they're playing sports because it's increased risk happens when you're dehydrated and there's less blood inside of the heart and it's going much faster and it can cause this mitral valve to kind of kink over and essentially have that effect of putting your thumb over the garden hose. That's often another cause of syncope, but not sudden cardiac death. Now, the soccer player or football player, depending on where you're from, who passed out and had sudden cardiac death at Euro 2021 doesn't necessarily have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There are a lot of other conditions that can also present with sudden cardiac death. Some of these conditions include anomalous coronary artery, where the artery starts at an incorrect location, and it predisposes it to kind of getting smushed and it can predispose you to having VTVF and sudden cardiac death. Other things include Brugada syndrome, long QT syndrome, short QT syndrome. It's much more rare, but it's there. Pre-excitation syndromes like Wolf Parkinson White. And there's also idiopathic VT, where essentially we don't know why it happened. We don't find anything abnormal, but you have VT. So we call it idiopathic VT. Certain medications can predispose you to having QT prolongation and increase your risk of VTVF. Certain electrolyte abnormalities, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia or ARVD. This is when the right ventricle isn't formed correctly and it can predispose you to VTVF, just like how in hokum that tissue doesn't form correctly. It actually changed its name to arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy because it's not isolated to the right ventricle and it kind of exists on a spectrum 
of how much abnormal tissue can be inside of the heart. What makes these diagnoses very difficult is that sometimes their initial presenting symptom is VTVF or sudden cardiac death. That's why whenever I talk to my patients about their family history of heart disease, I not only ask about typical things and common things like high cholesterol, hypertension, high blood pressure, or a history of heart attacks or abnormal heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation, but I also ask about abnormal deaths in the family, things like drowning in a pool or car accidents at a young age. These are things that might be thought of as just an accident, but maybe it was a VTVF and we didn't even know it. Now, one of the things about medicine that I find the most beautiful is that I've had patients literally die and walk out of the hospital a week later. And I always have this moment in the back of my head where patients leaving the hospital, they and their family are thanking doctors, nurses, everyone on their team who'd help take care of this patient. And of course, the patient will live a long life because we're able to do a lot of different procedures and all different tests in order to make sure that this doesn't happen again, or at least decrease their risk of having sudden cardiac death. But when someone suffers from sudden cardiac death, the most important people are the ones who are the first responders, the people who are doing CPR in the field, putting on that AED. Those are the people that not only save this patient's life and, and then give the doctors and nurses and everyone in the hospital an opportunity to do their job, but they also provide a patient with the potential for a good quality of life. When we perform CPR, we're literally pressing down on the chest to try and squeeze the heart to perfuse your vital organs, including your brain. If you're down without a pulse for five minutes, there's going to be a little of a noxic brain injury, basically damage to the brain because it doesn't get enough oxygen. But when you perform adequate CPR, pressing down at least two inches, that is perfusing vital organs, keeping that patient alive, and making sure that there's no long-term damage to their brain and other organs from this cardiac arrest. And my final message to anyone who's watching this video is to sign up for CPR classes. If you don't already know how to perform CPR appropriately, or if you're just a little rusty and you want a refresher, you can sign up to many classes. I'll put a link somewhere in this video where you can click it and find a CPR class close to you because performing CPR not only keeps people alive, but it provides them the opportunity to have a good quality of life. Typically at CPR classes, you not only learn how to do chest compressions, keep people alive, but also use an AED or an automated external defibrillator appropriately. So if you like this video, don't only smash the subscribe and like button, but sign up for CPR classes and potentially save someone's life.